Hi everyone, Larry Bailey here with the Mortgage Community. It's Tuesday, four o'clock Eastern. We're getting together uh, today. I hope everybody brought their um, their uh, thank you cards and their songs they want to reminisce and all the pictures of all the SDK stuff you've loved o over all the years. All those plugins, all that stuff. We're going to talk a lot about the STK Retirement Party. If you haven't already heard, uh, I sent out an announcement to uh, all clients last week about the STK being retired in October 2025. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, the year 2019. Um, we're going to talk about how many cool, cool people are joining uh, the mortgage dot community here, uh, like yourselves and. Uh, today, earlier, I found somebody who uh, I've known for a while, but she had no idea about mortgage community. And so um, I please spread the word. We're going to talk about that. And uh, let's get into it. So first of all, uh, today's September 24th, 2024. Um, I'm going to talk about 2019 for a second. I know it's kind of a weird way to start it, but I did want to bring this up um, because I was all the code I loved before. I love it, Brian. Uh, you guys always keep keep it fresh. So, I was looking for some uh, some historical information for last week's webinar I did with Matt Van Fossen about uh, SDK stuff, right? And I found a slide deck from 2019. I'll post it in, in the in the community um, in the replay. So, if you're watching this, look for the link. I'll post it in there. And the reason why this is relevant is because it's been happening. This SDK retirement has actually been happening since 2019. How do I know that? Because in 19.4, the slide deck from Ellie May at the time was very clear on one slide it had SDK and the next slide it did not have SDK. Now you might say, Larry, that's a little bit, um, it's a little bit deep, right? Like who the hell keeps that stuff from back then? Um, but you know, if you've been listening to me um, blabber on about making sure you get all your partners onto Encompass Partner Connect. Again, you might not have connected these dots. I totally appreciate that as users because you don't, I mean, you're busy running your mortgage companies, right? But the reason why is because all the SDK technology for vendors was being ceased. In other words, closed down. And so all the vendors have to get the APIs. And so let's keep going with this. So uh, those that have Kenzie May, Kenzie May builds great stuff. They've been using Infinity Tools. They started announcing Infinity Tools and they could tell you better than I could, but certainly it wasn't this year. It was last year sometime, maybe even the year before for all I know. We've all known about this SDK thing for a long time. It's not been a secret, but if it's new to you, I appreciate that and we do, which is why last week's email out of the blue really stoked a lot of, a lot of um, reaction. And so what I wanted to really talk about, um, again, ad nauseum here is what this all means, what it is, what it's not. We're gonna talk about, is somebody forcing you to Encompass Web? Because that's not true. We're gonna talk about form code versus DLL, what that really means. Um, we're gonna talk about the series that, if you haven't already signed up for it, again, I'll put that in the link. I made a whole kind of bunch of community events One's on the first one out of part one out of four is happening on the 26th. That's with Amy Cross, who heads up the whole developer connect platform. Definitely don't want to miss that if you care about this topic. Um, we're going to talk about using the web settings for desktop. And um, he asked to not be identified because he's too cool for that. But I'm going to go over uh, something that I learned today that was really super cool that um, uh, a client and, a, and, a, and a, a, a member, community member, did with their Encompass uh, web settings to truly automate MERS min registration native. So um, keep the chats coming. Those that are using the chat, go ahead and do that. If you have a question about this, you, want, you feel like you want to come up online um, and on microphone or on video, uh, let me know. And we'll invite you up as a speaker and we can talk about it. Um, all right. So Angela asks, do you think the existing plugins using SDK will continue to work? Not just for any new development can be done in SDK. All right. Let's talk about this a lot. Who doesn't have an SDK plugin installed in their Encompass? And 
the reality is you may think that it's like nobody doesn't have plugins and that's just not true um, there's actually plenty of clients who don't have plugins at all and that works just fine the reality is their encompass works faster than yours just saying so when it comes to these plugins um, what's really important to understand what's happening what it what it is what's happening October 25 anything that uh, Craig says he doesn't have any there you go thanks Craig for speaking up um, so if you are using a user interface hack which is colored pipeline that's a hack loan banners from third parties those are hacks um, input form control that lets you cycle the way the input form loads that's a hack these are all UI hacks and the reason why they were created many years ago was because people didn't have the opportunity to create better workflows. They didn't understand how these things were working. And so they turned to third parties to develop SDK based technology that was very easy to build. So basically anybody can build it and throw it into your encompass. And um, in some cases, the performance of your baseline encompass suffered and the general reaction is, yeah, but if it takes an extra 10 or 15 seconds to load or do something, but you're saving five minutes, isn't it worth it? To which I say, maybe, but what about every single time I have to go into that file and I have to wait 10 or 15 seconds? How many people, how many files, how long has it been? Do we even still need it? So what we're talking about here is the idea of when we've got an API ability to do the thing that needs to be done, we're going to use that. If you're doing something in your Encompass that is SDK plugin based, that is uh, unrepeatable uh, because it's a UI hack or something along those lines, what's going to happen here is the, the brilliant minds of the third parties who develop technology are going to come up with some alternative solutions, ICE is also going to be baking some things into your Encompass natively, which again, everybody's been asking for. So now ICE is doing it, which is cool. Um, things like USPS integration, um, that it's going to happen automatically, no plugin needed. Things like maybe bringing in the web-based UI for loan banners, which you can completely customize yourself. By the way, if you didn't know that, go to your encompass.ice.com and you can customize your own loan banner. So, there's lots of things that are that are happening that may not seem obvious, but I wanted to just promote because I've been talking about this for a long time. So now it's here, um, which is good. Last thing I'll say on this is when it comes to what happens October 25, um, two things are really important to know. First of all, any input form, uh, desktop input form builder that's using any type of um, any type of libraries, documented or undocumented library calls uh, that you would normally use in SDKs, but if you're using it in your input form code, that's going to be unaffected. What we're talking about is, is your Encompass platform trying to get to a DLL to then go do something? That's not going to work with one big takeaway. So again, in the announcement, not I'm not speaking out of school here, it's in the announcement, it's very, been very public. If by October next year, you're using SDK in your Encompass for something that is completely um, critical to your business and it cannot be done any other way, document it, talk to ICE, you guys will work it out. Um, there might be a fee, there might not be a fee. It just depends on what's really happening. Um, but the, um, the idea here is that uh, you need to communicate because over the last eight years, nine years, 10 years, the amount of SDK that's running in Encompass is off the charts. The number one complaint that everybody has about Encompass is it runs too slow. Tell me if I'm lying, because I'm not. It's a number one complaint. And so ICE is doing something about it because we know that the SDK platforms and the software slow things down um, in terms of speed. Uh, how do we know that? Because I've gone on and publicly shown like, hey, listen, if you can't open your loan in three seconds, then you're, you know, you're slower than you need to be. Um, all right. So what is this not? This re SDK retirement is not a forced move to get you to go to the to Encompass Web, not by any stretch. And I'm not saying that because 
I'm being asked to say that. I'm saying that because that's not the intention. I sit with the folks, the executive folks. I'm on the partner advisory board, just like every other um, every other vendor that's asked to be on there. There's about 10 of us on there. And the reality is this is not forcing you to go to web, not at all. What this is forcing you to do is look at your workflow. This is forcing you to actually understand what technologies you really have installed by taking inventory of, of what you're doing. And what this is really about is making sure that the Encompass platform is being used in the best way possible. Whether you're using desktop exclusively, whether you're using web exclusively, or what's gonna happen for 90, maybe 80X percent of, the, of, of us as clients, you're gonna use sometimes web, sometimes desktop. And actually that's what we've been seeing at Mortgage Workflow Partners. We've been helping companies migrate their sales teams, their secondary teams, and their post-closing teams right now to using Encompass Web because in sales, it's far faster and far more mobile to be able to do business, which is what the sales team demands for secondary because we now have the secondary registration tool. And if you haven't seen that yet on Encompass Web, you're missing out. It is identical to what's in desktop. And you, you show me one secondary person who loves going into Encompass and, and I'll buy you a drink because it just doesn't happen. They want to live in their PPEs. Um, they want to make sure that they have to go into the file as little as possible because every second that they're waiting is one more chance for, some, for the company to lose money. And the third one is post-closing. In case you didn't know this, post-closing is nothing but tasks. You're chasing docs, you're delivering, you're doing follow-ups. There is nothing better than workflow tasks um, in Encompass when it comes to documenting what has to happen um, and what hasn't happened yet. So um, that's really what that's all about uh, in terms of where we are. The uh, form code, like I mentioned earlier, is really important because if you're using, if you, if you go through your Encompass, and by the way, if you don't have a, um, an analyzer to go through all of your code, remember on your Encompass homepage in the lower right-hand side, you can see which input forms have custom code. You can go to your input form builder and you can pull up all your code. Now, you can see all your load code or unload code in one spot, but if you have code throughout other controls in your input forms or if somebody else developed that input form for you and just kind of gave it to you, or it's been in there for who knows how long, you may want to invest in something that actually uh, gives you the ability to see across your entire platform. Um, there are multiple vendors out there between uh, Kenzie May, between Lender Toolkit, between Awesome Technologies Inc. Um, I would encourage you to check out all three. Uh, each one has a different price point. Each one has a different level of insight. And uh, each one gives you um, different outputs that might be helpful for what you're looking for. Uh, so, but if you don't have anything and you do have development done, again, if you don't have plugins, little to worry about. If you're really not sure about all of your other code because somebody else did it, even if it's hiring somebody to tell you what and like do a code review for you to give you an example of what you have at risk, um, go for it. It's worth it. And get organized. So uh, I'm going to share a screen here for a second. And um, and first of all, I thought this was pretty cool. I thought about doing this last week. Let me go ahead and share a screen over here. So uh, everybody who's on the call, this is where you are. Uh, so I thought this was pretty cool because we're across the country. I don't know. I just think it's neat to see everybody joining the community and participating in these calls. So thank you for coming. Uh, this little guy, this little lender readiness, I'll post this in the community also with the other things I've been talking about. But one of the, this is from the call last week that I did with Matt, and it goes through a bunch of stuff and what to do. Um, one of the things that you've got to do in here, I think we do a checklist. We do a checklist down here somewhere. Um, is, here we go. So reviewing your plugins. If you haven't done this in a while, or if you've never done this, please get into your input form builder, go to manage customizations and take, uh, take note of um, what you have. Secondly, go in, make sure you're going into uh, on the home page on the lower right hand side, 
look for the SDK tab and that'll tell you what kind of outbound calls your SDKs are making. Um, Angela asked a question that's really important. Thanks, Candace, for answering Angela, but just so we make this really clear. Angela asked, so no code and input form builder will work. Um, that is not true. That is completely not true. Um, the idea here is of what's going to no longer work is an SDK plugin unless you get a, 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 an exception from ICE. Okay, Angela, so if you have any code and input form builder, that's not going to stop working. Okay. Um, all right. Bill asks, is there a best practice slash SDK list of best items to have API plugins? This is a great question. Uh, thanks, Bill, for asking. So here's the deal. You have to understand when, when we go through, like, again, on screen here with this, check, with this checklist, the purpose of plugins is to solve a specific workflow problem. And I can tell you that as mortgage workflow partners, I literally created an entire organization to solve workflow problems with no technology, with everything native. Most of what I come over, Bill, to answer your question, most of what I come over when people need things automated, it's because either A, their workflow is so broken, they need, they're, 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 they think that solving, that automation is solving the people problem. Um, and that's never been true. It's always a workflow problem first. And then the second thing is that you're trying to do things that Encompass doesn't natively support, and that's also changing. Uh, I met a group of folks today from a very large company, has no idea what Workflow Engine can do, none. And so we're gonna spend time where I'm educating them on what, wor what Workflow can do. Uh, so in terms of API plugins, Bill, what I would encourage you to do is first of all, document what it is in your workflow that you need uh, accomplished. And then I would explore a workflow engine, either yourself or with somebody else that you know and trust that, that knows it really well. Um, I might know a guy if you hadn't need any help. And then lastly, figure out what's, what's also coming down in, in uh, ICE's roadmap, because one of the things you don't wanna do is invest in a piece of technology that's on a short list of being provided to you at, at no cost because it's baked into your, um, your, your base and compass. Angela asks one more question, please. Getting the user in input form builder, for example, uses the SDK. Getting the user in an input form builder. Uh, I have no idea what your question is, Angela. You have to be a little bit more specific. So remember, to get to input form builder is a persona checkbox under the settings tab. So I know that's not what you're asking, but just... <laughs> <laughs> Just in case if anybody knows that's, that's a persona thing, you do not need to be a super admin to get the input form builder. Uh, any persona can be at granted access to input form builder um, in the settings tab of the persona. So I don't know if that's your question, but uh, there you go. Bill, I hope it, hopefully that answered your question um, on that. Cool, so for designing that's a separate tool from ICE that comes with Encompass. Uh, yeah, I don't know what you guys are talking about. So I'm gonna keep on moving. September, keep the chats coming, we'll try and figure this out. September 26th, again, register for uh, parts one, two, three, four. Uh, Shane says, I believe Angela is saying she uses SDK Logic to determine who the user is or what role they are, um, input form. Oh, so you can, again, you can use code. So currently, um, you might be used to using a plugin to go fetch loan level user, like who is the current user in the file? And there's, um, rather than write the code, so here, here's the reason for the plugin, okay? And um, for those that we're talking about, a lot of, a lot of people use uh, Kenzie Mae's Ketchup, right? Ketchup plugin, um, Ketchup's an input form. And so what ends up happening is historically, you might try to catch virtual fields that are SDK library based like current user or current user plugin or current user user group, those kinds of things. And the plugin automatically adds the value to an input form that you're not on yet. So I don't know, I'm not a technical person, right? That's why I, I, don't, I didn't create mortgage workflow technology partners. It's just workflow. But what I can tell you is that the reason why you're looking for this is for something to happen. And so historically speaking, you couldn't fire um, rules based upon the role of somebody. 
or you couldn't deliver things. There's things that you want to have happen based upon who they were or what their persona was or what their role is in the file. Those virtual fields are available in Workflow Engine. Angela, so to everybody who's used to using something within a file to figure standard field triggers based upon what persona the person has or what user group the person's in, those kinds of things. Um, you know, you can look at Workflow Engine. And as Candace points out, you can use form load code to uh, bring in that information if that form is loaded. So one of the things that you can do here is just use the library code to get that information and look and put that look that code in a in a space that everybody goes to and every time that loan is open it's there you don't need a plugin for that now ideally it'd be great if ice puts that kind of functionality into the file some other way and we can just use whatever it is that you guys are talking about in your use case we can use it in workflow engine um, if it's not already available but this is kind of what i'm talking about like just the fact that you're thinking about this is important because that technology that catch it thing is older and the only reason why it's still valuable is because you're using it somehow in your workflow and you've not thought of any other way to do it in 2024 so now we're, we're causing you to think about that um, I'm going to also talk about JavaScript and developing. So there's been a lot of talk really for the last two years about do I need to learn JavaScript to know how to administer with Encompass Web? And the answer is no. You don't need to learn JavaScript. It's not something you have to add to your resume whatsoever. Um, I put in the community, you can go to um, code, code, somebody help me, whatever it is, the name of the site. You can learn introduction JavaScript for free. JavaScript is a universal language. It's not specific to Encompass. Um, yeah, whatever I did, Brian, on the... So I put a post up earlier this week, uh, maybe yesterday or Sunday or something. Um, Code Academy. Thanks, Kevin. Code Academy, it's free. Uh, I'm telling you right now, there's three kinds of administrators that your company is going to need going into the future with Encompass um, based upon what your needs are. The first one, which is most everybody on this call, which is a workflow settings expert. That's you. And that means you're going to have to make sure you stay on top of all your desktop settings, all your web settings, all your connect settings, whatever those are. You're going to continue along that. One of the things that's going to be really helpful is if your company decides that they want to get involved in more custom dev work. Thank you, Kevin. That's the post I made, the Code Academy. If you're that company, you're going to have two other team members. You're going to have a junior developer and a senior developer. And if you go to ICE uh, Experience this next uh, uh, cycle, so March next year, March 25, you're going to see in the developer track, you're going to see um, these three roles named out. ICE likes to call them something different, like innovator or inventor or something. I don't know. It's too complicated for me. I just like settings workflow expert because you're going to be the person between the business and encompass and you're going to tell them exactly what they should be doing and how to do it and then if you have to develop stuff so if you want to learn javascript start at the code academy thing it costs you nothing it's free if you want to go further than that go with a company that actually specializes in teaching javascript to high-end developers because if that's your path that's where you want to go um and so i want to put that out there to make sure you understood what was happening because again there's lots of folks who think you need to learn JavaScript to use Encompass Web. I'm using Encompass Web. I don't know JavaScript for nothing. I can't even I can't even write significant visual basic code properly. Not a chance. That's just not my thing. Um, and so, uh, in any event, I just want to explain that Chris did some sleuthing for us. Chris, you're my hero. Um, and Chris in the chat here, I found out what that W3WP EXE is. Uh, this is a Microsoft ISS process. It means you have some sort of website or web server that is being run IIS. We don't know exactly what it is, blah, blah, blah. Um, Sarah found Optimal Blue, which is cool. Uh, I always thought it was something like that, but um, who the hell knows? And again, this is great that we're having this conversation. Um, so listen, I don't know if I'm going to be at the annual, uh, NBA annual event, 
but I know I'm going to be at the ICE Mortgage Technology event. Um, I made up these buttons. Let's see if I can, I'll, I'll stop sharing screens to this thing. I'll come up. Where's my stop sharing? So I made up these little buttons. Uh, if you, if I'm at a, uh, an event, there they are. If I'm at an event, I'd love to give you one of these. I got 700 of them. So chase me down, get a pin if you want for your, uh, for your lanyard. Uh, all right. Last thing I want to, I want to really talk about here is, uh, I want to talk about real life use cases with Encompass web settings in desktop. So first of all, um, as a, just as a, a reminder, three places that I want you to think about Encompass web UI right now, your sales team, your secondary team, and your post-closing team. Sales team, because you need to show them how to use workflow, uh, how, to, how to use their workflow using card-based views. I'm telling you right now, it's where the money is. The fact that they can get on, th on, on Encompass Mobile. Um, you know, again, you're going to look at your own security standards, whatever those are, and they're going to make that decision. Secondary team, because the speed to get in and out of files and the fact that the, what they're used to working on, which is a secondary registration tool, is exactly what they're used to, um, is beautiful. And again, you can build a custom input form that's card-based. And so if they have to get to other places, it's really quick and simple. Um, and then the third one is post-closing because of, of workflow task management. I'm gonna show, I'm gonna tell you one thing that almost everybody has to worry about on this call and watching the replay, which is MERS min registration. And I'm going to give you um, the steps that you can do this today, right now, no plugin needed. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to create a scheduler and you're going to schedule that thing for uh, one day past your, your loan being funded, assuming that's when you register your MINS. You're then going to enable min, uh, MERS registration in your EPC. And then you're going to set up the services automation for MERS to go ahead and uh, fulfill that service order. Now, when you get into there, you have templates that you would fill in. You'd fill in your MERS um, identity information, things like that. And what, and what this team member came up to me is, is like, Larry, it was really cool because I have two different warehouses. One is a certain warehouse. We've got a certain warehouse ID that MERS requires to register our MINS. And when it's another warehouse, there's no uh, warehouse ID. That's in the template. So now literally starting today, um, now it's happening one day after funding, whether that's a weekend, holiday, whatever, 8 a.m. on that following day, all of these MINs are getting registered and it's, and it's following the path depending on the, what the warehouse was based upon Venn.x200, which is on your file contacts. The software, the automation knows exactly which uh, template to use to get a proper successful MIN registration. Beautiful. I'll keep the language clean. Um, Maggie asks, can you still, can you schedule it to happen when a milestone is finished? Yes. So remember, we, when we went over this, really important. Building a scheduler is like building a pen, right? It doesn't do anything until you cause it to start. So it would be like to use a pen, right? It's a pen, but you can't write with it until you turn it. Now you have a tip. So when you go through and you build a scheduler, if it's one day after scheduler, you're going to build a workflow rule that starts the scheduler, and then you'll build a rule of what to do when that scheduler ends. So in this particular example, the same scheduler is being used for multiple workflow rules as a result of when that scheduler ends. So if you want more details uh, about that, certainly ask. Um, I would encourage you to, to explore that. I've gone through how to use schedulers and how to use um, workflow settings um, a lot, but I'm always up for another conversation if you guys want to have it. Um, where is a scheduler located? Remember, the scheduler is the clock that fires the automation. The MERS is in your partner connect. So contact MERS, make sure that you get a name, you get Encompass Partner Connect enabled for you. Um, they'll have a guide for you on how to configure that. And you're going to create a workflow rule to start the scheduler. And then you're going to create a separate workflow rule for when that scheduler ends. 
to automatically register your min with MERS. And that's 30 minutes on the dot. Damn, that was good. So uh, I hope today's Sunset SDK party has answered a lot of questions. Um, everything of which is this is enough. This is, I hate to call it a nothing burger, but the stuff that came out last week, everybody's like, oh my God, hair on fire. It's not. Do we have to, a lot of work to do? Yes. Do we still have things that ICE has to fix? Yes. Do we still have things that are done in SDK that aren't the same or even available in APIs? Yes. But the fact is, let's start this work now. I'll post this stuff in the replay, like I mentioned. If you have any questions, guys, keep the conversations going here in the community. And if there's anything I can ever do to help you, of course, reach out to me directly. I'm going to be posting some uh, uh, package uh, service package solutions uh, for mortgage workflow partners, specifically for automated initial disclosures, as well as data validation for initial disclosures, native. Automated underwriting, like truly automated underwriting, native. And then getting into um, helping companies with a package set up to get you to enhance conditions, get you to task-based workflows, and then ultimately uh, helping companies migrate more and more of their uh, desktop uh, settings and workflow into Encompass Web. So if there's anything I can ever do to help you with that, let me know. We're here. Final questions? Everybody good? Last one brought the donuts for the party, I hope. Anyway. Um, you guys be well, stay safe, get to Thursday's meeting with ICE, don't miss it, okay? And, and I'm going to be on session number two. I think Chris Mace is going to be on session three from what he told me. I don't know, that's what he told me. And we'll we'll keep talking about this stuff. You guys have a great rest of your day and month, and uh, be well. Thanks as always. Take care.